What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So this will be the mostly spoiler free review for The Nun 2. Um, this movie we know is a sequel to The Nun 2018. It is actually I think the ninth or 10th. I think it's the ninth entry in the overall Conjuring universe at this point. It's directed by Michael Chaves. It's written by Ian Goldberg, Richard Nang, and Akila Cooper. Uh, story by Akila Cooper definitely that name got a lot of us excited about this film because of her recent works and we know she can cook when it is just her and of course when she's not stepping into the sandbox that was already a mess like you have here with this nun franchise if you will at this point but the film itself is set four years after the ending of the first film the film follows sister irene as she once again comes face to face with the demonic force valak the nun at a boarding school in france it stars tysa farmiga uh, Jonas Blockett, Storm Reed, Anna Popwell, Bonnie Aarons, Caitlin Rose Downey, and several others. Now, The Nun 2 is absolutely an improvement over Valak's first game of Peekaboo, but the improvements start and stop in less than five minutes for me. You see, the original movie revealed to the audience the answer to its own mystery during its opening sequence and then forced you to endure its runtime waiting for Irene and uh, Burke to figure out what you already knew because the opening sadly overshared. The Nun 2 doesn't burst its own bubble during its opening sequence, which sounded better on paper, I will admit, than how it was executed on screen. It's still an effective opening that helps set the mood, makes you uneasy. But from there, let's just say you're going to need a big dose of delusion and maybe a few drugs to be able to come out of this film, stand ten toes strong and say with your chest that this was a great movie. Akilah Cooper having her first major dud here is something I can forgive because, again, she did not start this mess. Her and the autopsy of Jane Doe writers can cook, but they were stepping into a playground that was all sorts of broken and they were expected to fix it, even though it's beyond repair. Now. The reliance on cheap jump scares, overbearing exposition dumps, stupid decision after stupid decision from characters is not something I'll forgive because the Conjuring universe, the, the first movie, showed us that this universe is capable of delivering scares that are earned and not formulaic and don't feel run of the mill and like they're coming off of a conveyor belt or coming off a, of a roll call type of sheet in this, in a scenario like, oh, next, next, next. Like that's how all the scares feel. Scares that will only... We, we know it can do stuff that's not formulaic. We've seen it in the original movie. Scares that will only add to your growing concern for the characters on your screen because they are actually likable. There is none of that present in The Nun 2. We have this young girl named Sophie, for instance, a girl who attends the boarding school Frenchie now works at, who on the surface can be likable because she's a child and I don't want to dislike children. Plus, she's being bullied by some other awful, horrendous girls. Frenchie seems rather fond of her and vice versa, mostly because I, I think he definitely was wanting to take out her mother. Uh, anyway, Sophie has several instances in this film where she is confronted with bizarre, unholy occurrences after unholy occurrences. And when asked what's wrong, she says, oh, nothing. Or when finally confessing to something being wrong with the school, she will write it off as just a feeling she has. Baby girl. And writers, this is hard to digest as a viewer because we see her have more than just a feeling and it makes her unlikable because she's being written as a willfully stupid character. Every character is one note or they are just simply unlikable. There's not much character development going on here, especially the girls who bully Sophie. I couldn't care less what happens to them and their roaches. That roach comment will make sense once you see it. The film's writing is at least making attempts to make sense out of Ed Warren's description of Maurice in the first Conjuring film because the first nun does a horrendous job of making me believe Frenchie is Maurice beyond just having it as a twist to end the movie. Frenchie's love arc here is enough for me to assume what happens next unless the nun three somehow botches this setup and unless they for whatever reason just lucked into this setup and weren't thinking anything about the details from that first Conjuring movie. Now, Valak still needing to possess Frenchie makes very little sense when I'm constantly reminded throughout this movie and even in the first nun how powerful this entity is. But the possession is made sensible to some degree by the writers we uncover more about irene's visions we learn about her mother more about their upgrade her upbringing and a big twist that might be fairly predictable to some 
Sister Deborah, who is played by Storm Reed, has a rough past. Tragedy struck her family during a fire, and she ended up here with Irene. That's all we get. And while it's telling me who this girl is, it's not enough for me to care what happens to her. Back to Irene really quick. How effective was Irene in the first movie against Valent, guys? For anyone who just recently rewatched The Nun, I know I did. How effective was she against Valak in that first movie? If memory serves me correctly, she nearly died. The Nun 2 wants you to believe that Irene is some sort of miracle worker now because she managed to survive Valak's, Valak's first attack and performed a miracle to defeat it. That's a hard narrative point to sell me on because no, she didn't. Valak is inside of Frenchie and has been running amok ever since. So it's quite laughable to think that Irene is the best there is to go against Valak and defeat it again when they're not, there's no again to be occurring because she didn't do it the first time. So there is no again. Valak at this point is just being squandered as a villain. And as iconic as Bonnie Aaron's contributions to The Conjuring 2 are, and as great as she is in this role, the titular films for Valak are now two for two with lackluster outings. Roaches being scarier than Valak in its own movie is quite impressive, to be honest, and humorous. And the film slowly chips away at the character's mystique so badly that it tries to make Valak scary again by giving it an Ursula moment. But that will make more sense once you see the movie. The magazine sequence is easily the most effective scare. It baits you into thinking it's going to be another formulaic scare, and then it ends up being one of the most unique and original sequences in the film. The Nun 2 even has the audacity to take iconic moments from The Conjuring 2 and turn them into these cheap, mediocre jump scares that are combined and filled in with these shabby visual effects at one point I, i'm trying not to spoil it too much i'm really am trying <laughs> michael chaves did a better job directing the conjuring 3 honestly because this is just a complete 360 in terms of quality and direction and this is another dud on his resume the pacing is hit or miss but mostly decent i will give it that there's a lot of focus on frenchie and sophie's bond and the films constantly jumping back and forth between the school shenanigans and irene playing velma with Deborah to figure out what Valak wants now besides playing peekaboo with a bigger roster this time now the cinematography I will admit it's not bad at all everybody again I think is on the same page when it comes to the cinematography the film has a lot of nice shots it has a lot of great set locations again Marco Beltrami's score as many of my screen fans might expect another highlight for the movie definitely not something i would want to undersell it is helping add tension in a lot of places where the tension is being undercut constantly because again this is still a prequel and a rather poor prequel in a lot of ways uh all in all i'm gonna have to say this is a slightly better sequel that still makes the same mistakes as the original and undercuts a lot of its own tension by still being a prequel that is just poorly made or poorly written I'll give Valak's second round of Peekaboo a 5.5 out of 10. You guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. And again, there is fun to be had with this movie. Don't get me wrong. Let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications in this video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.